cast iron pan and that stops the uh, the ashes from falling down and also it uh, it won't bend and destroy it because it's cast iron see how straight it always stays and then this is the uh, the tray. it turns out there's a hot rock in it we put hot rocks in the oven so that we could actually use this for cooking saunas uh, steam baths uh, uh, also if you have a uh, what do you call it a uh, sweat lodge you could have hot rocks and it's, it's efficient, you don't have any smoke, and um, also, you can bring it in a bucket in your, in your room, or if you go camping, you can use a hot rock. So, this is actually your ashtray. That goes in there. So if you could have a shot looking in that way, I don't know if it's going to pick the light up. See the, and then we have this go in here. I'm gonna have to. That has to always be clean so it works. But now I'll take a shot from the top so you can see what we did. See, that? Here, see how that works. That's like something you don't find at Home Depot, for sure. <laughs> So this is a good stacking rock, see how it's flat, as you know, it's not easy to find those. So in this area, if we could keep them as flat as possible, so that we could, we could do our bridging. And also know that you're going around, see it's like a bevel, so we're going to keep this, making that over that bridge right here. Let it find its home, and try to tilt it in a little bit, if possible. Here's another one. You see that bell right there? We want to make, yeah, I can't even pick that up. It has stiction. Go out like that and keep the bevel coming out. It's an art to make the rock stall go in the right position. We had a little a pile of gravel outside last weekend, and I had everybody build a little rock wall. Did uh -huh. you do that at the uh, workshop? We did actually did foundations with it, you know, I mean, using urbanite, you know, using small stone for wedge, wedge stones and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, this is all going to have earth and plaster, these cracks. So 
So what I'm doing is I'm just getting it in there so it's no air bubble. Larger. Well, maybe this one's a good one. Here, why don't you find a... Now we could also go like this, but... Let's see, the longest... Here's one right here. Now you don't have to go the same height either. See, this, this has a bevel on it. So I, I don't mind going like... This is a nice place for a round rocket. We're, we're touching that, so we're yeah. touching that. Okay. So once you build up some top under that, I mean, this is close. You know, one of my favorite things is when you get a contractor who's been working with concrete their whole lives and getting all that concrete in their hands. You know, does that affect your skin? Well, lime does, but dirt doesn't. Right, so lime will. <laughs> I mean, I would stick my hands in concrete. But... Actually, this... This actually should... Right, well... We could put some in here. Shave a little bit out yeah. of that? Or? Well, actually, I want to uh, uh, put some cob in there. Yeah. See, that's, if that's what's holding up right there, you know it's going to be good when it goes in. Here, why don't you uh, throw this to you? See, the, the, the white shirt is not a good thing to wear. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they make laundry. We, we, we had someone wear white pants and white shirt once, and white sneakers. And you know she was hot. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it comes out, that's what the laundry's for. Exactly. I wear whites all the time for the drywall business. So. Well, well, there's a company that actually uses clay to stain. I saw it on uh, Dirty Jobs. Remember that? So also we like to get back and look at some of these from a distance. What I do is I take a torch and we burn off the straw. Dude, one of the most important things is getting back. Look at it. Trying to get a feel of what's going on. All right, so here's a story. Um, this is the eighth generation of a cob oven I built. When I first made cob ovens, uh, I thought there were some things that were really wrong about them. And the first thing I noticed is they have these, these black soot that's on the front of it, okay? So I said, well, let's try to figure out what we could do with that. And um, so what I did is I made it a rocket oven. I made every oven a rocket oven, meaning there's, a, there's a, an intake, mm -hmm. and then there's a, a, a under a, a double chamber. Mm -hmm. The double chamber is, um, is where the fire is. Mm -hmm. And if you could contain the fire, then what you have, you have uh, 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 less... Uh, CO2s that are just bursting out, less car carcinogenics, a more effective fire. Um, and so what I initially did, I had a stack come from here mm -hmm. and it made a spiral around the dome. Mm -hmm. And that was the first generation. Mm -hmm. and, and the Gervais of Path to Freedom have that. And it works really well. 
I mean, they're out there cooking bread. I mean, if you've seen their site, Homestead, uh, what is it, Homestead? Urban Homesteading. Path to Freedom. <laughs> yes, Path to Freedom. Uh, and so, long story short is uh, everyone has been progressively better. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is, uh, is have a, a, a cooking area, have a shelf come out. This is a piece of two and a half inch uh, solid white granite. And, and that actually uh, is going to be getting really hot. So what we did, we took pumice, and this is pumice stone. I made, I carved out these little pumice rocks, mm -hmm. and they're going to be blocking the heat, the intense heat from this fire, which gets up to 2,000 degrees. See, in a regular oven, you only, like a cob oven, you only get up to about 1,500, maybe 1,200. And the reason is because it doesn't have that rocket action. You don't have the, the intake blowing on the wood. And, and this right here actually moves in and out. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and that moves in and out because it gives you a little bit more effectiveness because the, the, the wood that's burning underneath is heating that pipe. It's mm -hmm. ducked. And anytime you have incoming air that's hot, mm -hmm. it, it, it makes it so much more intense. It's, it's kind of like when you put a fire out, you add water to it. Mm -hmm. You could actually put a fire out with cold air. If you have enough cold air blowing on a fire, it'll put it out. Mm -hmm. Pretty bizarre, huh? Uh, well, if you blow on a fire, you can blow it out. Yeah, like with a candle. Yeah. But, so I'm not, I'm not really following you. But well, the cold, cold, the, the cold air fires don't like it. If you ever go to like an old log oh, cabin. Cold air fires don't like it. Yeah, okay. it's very difficult. Like if you have, and also moisture too. Um, so we, we try to have as much thermal mass around this as possible. Um, as well. In other words, at every inch, uh, every hour you let the fire burn is, is uh, one inch of, of penetration in the fire brick and in the cob. So we have brick under here as well. Mm -hmm. And the reason we have brick is because this is going to be entombed forever mm -hmm. and you don't want to ever have to maintain any of these things in here. Mm -hmm. uh, I welded this on. If I have a, a problem, I have to dig this out from the inside, which is not that big of a deal because Cobb is very forgiving. Mm -hmm. and so I could just take these bricks out and I can still have the most of the thing uh, put together still. So and then what happens is um, this right here is, is where water gets pumped in by just a couple of drops. Mm -hmm. And then the, the water actually will, um, will start to rise up. I have these pipes at an angle so that any condensation it drips outward away from the fire. But there'll be a little puddle of water that starts to get this high, and then that starts boiling, and all that air space in there starts to really pump out the, 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 the moisture, and it comes out this way, and, and it, it comes above, and it goes into the stack, which will be right about here, and there'll be a, a, a teardrop um, shaped nozzle that shoots out the, the steam. And that steam will be uh, really, really intense because um, it's going to um, spiral a vortex of air that will actually mix up the CO2s with the oxygen. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully it'll be heavy enough to bring it back down to the plants. We have to bring fun back to to what, you know, eco and, and being the stewards of this, this planet. And then what Bill Molson said, he says, we have to bring everything back to its natural form. And, and my, man has destroyed the natural form to a big degree, and we have to start thinking in terms of something that's more natural. So there you have it, for now.